Welcome and thank you for joining us for the online encounter. Whether you're joining us from Omaha or anywhere in any part of the world, we want you to know that you're part of the Love Church family and we're glad that you're here. Make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications for our channel so that you never miss a message from Love Church. Now grab your Bibles and let's get started. Let's pray though and ask that God would be the one bringing the meal. Lord, thanks for your presence in this place your spirit to guide us and whether we're here in this auditorium or in the kitchen, in the car, you have a word for us and I'm just privileged and honored to be a spokesperson today to deliver this meal. We pray, remove me from the equation as always. I pray that you would speak from heaven, grow us, grow us, every single one of us, grow us closer to you mature us in our faith, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, well, have you ever been misunderstood? Have you ever, ever been misunderstood? Maybe it's uh, something you've said, uh, something you've done, and someone on the other end misinterpreted your motive. They had preconceived notions of how you live or what you do, and they had a ton of assumptions on your action or what you said. Anybody in the church today, you've been, isn't it, isn't it the worst when, like, when you're misunderstood? And there's really nothing you can do about it unless someone comes to you and actually clarifies it. And in my profession, I speak like for a living, and so often what I say is misinterpreted or there's preconceived notions, and so it, it's really, really, it's one of my biggest struggles, if I'm honest with you. Now, that's why I have to have my ID and JC only and be like, I, okay, I have all I need in Christ, but I heard, I heard this story. It was a true story. It was a 12-year-old girl. Where are my 12-year-old girls up in here? Where are my girls? Girl power. Let's go. And it was a 12-year-old girl, and she, she texted her grandma, and her motive was like, she just felt so blessed to have an amazing grandma. And so she texted her grandma and she goes, 12 year old girl, she goes, man, I love you. You're, you're a great, you're gonna, you're a great grandmother. You're a great grandmother. Now grandmas, where are my grandmas up in here, right? So you get the text. It's your 12 year old granddaughter talking about, you're a great grand grandma. She lost her Jenkins. She's like, oh, honey, what happened? 12? You know, they got pregnant early in the biblical days, but come on now, like, hold, middle school. She was saying, you're a great, you know, you're great. Okay. Some people are just, okay, right here. <laughs> the, I heard another story. It was a guy, and he was part of a study group. We're my, we're my college, high school people up in here, like, part of a uh, study group maybe a master's degree. Some people, you just came back uh, to finish your degree at age 40, whatever. It, it, was a, it was a group of people, and the dude brought, he like baked brownies because he just wanted to bless his study group. And so he brings it to the group, and one of the girls brought brownie, the brownie home. She didn't, she didn't eat it there. She brought it home to share with her boyfriend. Well, the boyfriend thought, that homeboy was trying to hit on his homegirl to bring the brownie. And he was like, oh, nah, ah. Uh. You, know, you know the jealous guy, you know what I'm talking about, the, the jealous dude? And the dude tries to go fight the poor guy that's just trying to bring brownies. He's just trying to be a blessing. And he's like, yo, bro, like, hey, I'm not trying to steal your babe. I'm just trying to bring brownies, man. <laughs> and, it, you know, he, homie cooled down and they didn't fight. And so I was just thinking, I don't know, how many fights, how many wars, how many family wars, how many church divisions, how many bitter souls could be freed by simply clarifying a conflict? having the courage to actually confront someone to clear up a misunderstanding. That's what we read. Did you guys read it in Joshua 22? 
Such an awesome story. If you're in our reading guide, you read it yesterday, and some of you guys are like, Saturday's my day off, I don't read it. Well, no problem, I'll, 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 I'll clear it up for you, okay? You slacker. No, just joking, I'm messing with you. <laughs> messing with you. In Joshua 22, remember now, the Israelites are taking ground in the promised land, and there was 12 tribes in total for God's people, the Israelites, and two and a half tribes before they crossed over the Jordan into the promised land on the east side of the, of the Jordan River, they saw that the land was plush. It was awesome farm ground. They had a bunch of cattle. And they asked Moses, they're like, hey, can we just post up here and take this land? It was Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh. And Moses strikes a deal with those people. He's like, all right, tell you what. If the fighting, if the men will cross the Jordan with the rest of the tribes and make sure that we, you know, you fight and conquer the land, then after it's all settled, tell you what, then you can go back so you can leave your wives and kids and cattle on, on this land. You guys remember that? Remember that? So, well, after seven years of fighting, can you imagine? It's like you're, some of you guys are military, you go over to a foreign land, you're fighting for seven years and you're wives and girlfriends and families back seas. That's kind of the idea. And seven years goes by, and they finally settle the land. There are all these different wars, and, and they look, and Moses had passed, Joshua is their leader, and they look to Josh, and they're like, hey, we, we've, we've fought faithfully, and the land is settled. Can we go back now? And he's like, he looked at it, he's like, absolutely. You, you fulfilled your commitment, and time, you know, dude, take a bunch of the booty, take a bunch of the possessions, the wealth that you've built through this conquest and go back and be with your family. Bless them and share all the plunder. So they're like, sweet. And so they, are, they start heading back. And as they, as they head back, they're like, you know, before we go back over the Jordan, we need to build an altar to make sure that we remember, in our, in our future generations remember, that we all together, all the tribes together, worship the one true God, Yahweh. And we, can, we gotta make it big so everybody can see before we go over the Jordan and get with our family. So they start building, whacking away. And again, it's, it's not another altar. Remember, there was one altar that the Israelites worshiped and had the sacrifices. It wasn't to, to make another one. It was just to make sure there was a memorial so they wouldn't forget. Bang. Well, dude, someone took a sh like an Instagram feed, like live video. What do you call it? Story. Is that what do you call it? I don't know. Reel? I don't know. I don't, this, I don't have this social media stuff. So they take a real story. And the nine and a half tribes see, see them building this, this altar. And it was super clear. You don't, no, there's one place to worship God. You can't do that. And, and word gets out and, and everybody losing their minds. We gotta go kill them and <laughs> take out this building. It wasn't brownie, it was a building. And, and, all, and all this stuff is going haywire. And I started thinking, how often do we make assumptions and want to go kill someone or go to war when we don't have all the facts? And so the message today, clearing up conflict, is about us as Christians growing and maturing and having courage to address issues. If, if you don't know all the facts, we need to get the facts. Just t tap your neighbor and say, get the facts. Get, get the fact. Let, let's, let's learn about this story. And it's, let's pick it up actually in verse, so it's Joshua 22. Let's pick it up in verse 11. Verse 11. The rest of Israel heard, and I want you to underline that, heard. <laughs> That's what hit me. They saw the, the post. They saw the blog. They saw the news report. 100% verified news report. <laughs> the rest of Israel heard. Someone say heard. If you're a note taker, you can write just in your Bible, trifle, and I'll get to that, trifle. It's a tasty trifle, they heard. 
Give me a little gossip. Nosy Nancy, your neighbor, texts you, hey, did you... The, the rest of Israel heard, heard, heard that the people of Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh had built an altar at Jeloloth, which means circle of stones, which should be an indicator that it's a memorial, not like an altar to sacrifice. At the edge of the land of, the, of Canaan on the west side of the Jordan River. It's, it's pretty cool, by the way. They, the archaeologists found this actual mem- memorial circle of stones. Isn't it cool? Like, Bible, this isn't just like some made up story. Like, this is like historical fact. Some of you guys are really headsy. This is good for you to know. So the whole, <laughs> so the whole community of Israel gathered at Shiloh. And this is tripping me out, dude. Look, check it out. And prepared to go to war. The dude, you know, his chick, his homegirls brings home the brownies. Prepared to go to war. They prepared to go to war against them. Prepared to go to war. I'm, and I'm reading this. I'm going war, dude. That's zero to hero really quick right there. But let me, let, me, let me give you the text so you understand why they freaked out so much. It's Deuteronomy chapter 12, very clear. Deuteronomy 12, verse 13, you can jot it down in your notes. It's Deuteronomy 12, 13 and 14. It says, be careful not to sacrifice your burnt offerings just anywhere you like. You may do so only at the place the Lord will choose within one of your tribal territories. So at that point, it was in Shiloh. It will eventually be in Jerusalem. So you're saying that's, I don't know, man, they're, they're kind of tripping right now. It was with good reason that they did because they, they knew the history of Israel when they started straying from God's best. It wasn't just those people that got affected, everybody else did. And so they started tripping. What have you been assuming lately? about what you've heard. What have you been assuming lately? Let me ask you this, what have you heard lately? What tasty trifle, you can write that down, that's your first, your first of three points, your, your trifle, this tasty trifle, have you heard or read or seen lately, but you haven't got all the facts. You haven't gone to the person and ask them, is this really true? It's hearsay. It's from someone else. Proverbs 26, 22, I love it. Here's what it says. Proverbs 26, 22, jot it down in your notes. The words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down, this is what hit me, and they go down into what? The inmost body. It, it seeps into your soul, and if you're not careful, that bitterness and resentment can stick in your soul for generations. That's why I get so hype about this because I see like this person that's 50, 60, 70 and they're still bitter over what Aunt Sally said at their turkey dinner three decades ago. And listen, this is not to shame you, but this is to free you. Why would you let Sally ruin your life because what she said? She was saying it because she was hurt and she was in pain. And now you're caught in prison because of what Aunt Sally said. We gotta move forward, man. <laughs> we gotta, I'm telling you, there's churches that judge other churches today. This broke my heart. And this was probably years ago when I actually was still on social media. And I saw, it just broke my heart because it said, it was a church that said, it was a picture of the pastors out front of the church. Our pastors are greeters. We're out front. We're not in the green room. And I was like, do you know what I do in the green room? Do you know I take my job seriously? Do you know when I'm on my face in this back room right now? What am I asking? God, I want you to speak to your people and change lives. And there's something about me being on my face before God. I say, God from heaven, like shoot a word to souls and change lives. 
And the reason I'm not out front is because I want to be out front, but I can't because I get distracted and I want to make sure that I do my job well and help you out as much as I can. And I started looking, I was like, <laughs> it's so cool too, because I then started judging that church. <laughs> and God's like, eh. guess what you have to do? You have to go to them and say, help me understand this blog post or whatever it was, this post. I, You see what's, and I'm asking you to reflect on your social media observations and your news observations and your judgments because I'm praying for a church that absolutely is strict on biblical purity but, but very gracious and patient with making judgments on other people because when we can grow to that church and be a mature church, we can lead a movement of amazing churches in this city that will, all, will also humble ourselves and walk in biblical integrity with humility. Amen. It's powerful, and it happens. I was reading of a war that was started due to just bickering. It was called the Pig War or something like that. And it was between England and the United States. I think it was early 1900s. And it was over this territory that there was some English and some Americans on this little area, and this, this crazy farmer saw this, like, this black boar or something coming into his land, and he, and he just like blows it away. And, and like now, all these, these, these military people from England are coming to this land, and now all the, the military from the United States are in this land. It's over a pig. I think that's some of our talk and some of our blogs, pig. I won't say what I think really it's pig, but I, I'll just say, I'm, you're like, oh, can you say that in church? Sorry. <laughs> I didn't say it in church. Proverbs 18, 13, this is so good. And listen, man, this is fire hose. You get with the Lord and ask him to, to speak to your heart. Not in the judgmental attitude, but... Lord, bring to surface what's happening in my heart as I'm operating in this wild, divisive world. Spouting off, look, listen to this now, spouting off before listening to the what, church? Oh. Spouting off before listening to the fa facts is both shameful and foolish. Can I show you another one? Leviticus 19.16, do not spread slanderous gossip among your people. Can you imagine if a church would just, the tasty trifles weren't tasty anymore and they actually made you repulsive? Like it, it, it was like, ugh. I think we could help a lot of people. By the way, when Tim the tailbearer uh, tells you some tasty trifle at, at work tomorrow or in, at school. Wait, you guys are out for school. I can't say that. Summer school. We're my summer school kids, y'all. And Tim the tail bear comes in talking about, oh, did you hear? Did, did you hear? Here's three questions I want you to ask. You guys ready for them? Just jot them down real quick. Number one, why are you telling me this? Good. Number, number two, have you got the facts from them? You know, in Matthew 18 says, if, if a brother or sister sins against you, go to that person one-on-one -on -one and clear it up. Someone say clear it up. Clear it up. You don't go to Aunt Sally and all these other people. I know you're hurting and I know you're, you're broken, but you go to them first and clear it up with them. And I'm telling you, you'll stop some wars in your family if you go to that person one-on-one. -on -one. I know it's gonna take courage, I know it's gonna be uncomfortable, but the fact of the matter is the Bible, don't take my word for it, the Bible says it. Number three, <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> what does it say, Kelly? Go ahead and say it. Can I quote you on that? Can I quote you on that? How about that one? And, 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 and the, the tail bearer is like, uh, I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> What had happened, hey, I'm late to a hair appointment, okay? <laughs> Let me roll. Trifles. So here they are. 
ready for war, Israelites, nine and a half tribes. They have false assumptions. They didn't get all the facts. They're ready to go gangster on these folks and just, just start whacking them. But thank God there's a mature person in the room that thought, hmm, maybe all out war without hearing their side of the story might be a little more prudent at this juncture. You know, sometimes all it takes is one mature person to actually avoid a major war and division. One mature person. All right, maybe not the case here, but because they're coming with guns blazing. But at least they went to talk with them. And that's number two. Jot it down in your notes real quick. They, they went to talk with them before writing the blog, okay? For verse 13. Verse 13 now. First, however, someone say first. First, however, they sent a delegation led by Phineas. Do you guys remember Phineas, by the way? Phineas, man, that dude, talk about standing up for God's best. You remember when the plague broke out because a lot of the Jewish men started having sex with the Moabite women? And one of the dudes brought a Moabite woman into his tent, and Phineas wanted to protect the purity of, of God's people. Do you guys remember what he did? Please tell me someone. Do you remember? He took a javelin, went into the tent, and stuck the javelin through the man and the woman, taking it out. And you know what it did? It actually stopped the plague because God's wrath poured out on all the impurity and would start killing everybody else. And how many of you know, we need some Phineases up in here. Now, gotta relax sometimes with the javelin, <laughs> just like in this case. It's, by the way, let me just say this to, to you that feel called to protect the purity of the Bible. You're a Phineas and I love you. But let me just say this, a Phineas without the facts is super dangerous. Be a Phineas all day long, but approach it with humility and all the facts. Phineas, son of Eleazar the priest, and here it is, to talk, to talk with the tribes, to talk to them first. A little dip diplomacy, is that what you call it? <laughs> Let's go talk first. Can we talk first? Can we talk? I have so much respect for people that instead of leaving the church, come to me and go, Todd, can you clarify this that you said, please, or that you did? So much respect for those people because you at least give me a chance. Now, if, if I say, you ask me, and I give you what is the truth and, it, and it's still off, that's one thing. Give, give, me, give me a chance He's, to talk with the tribes of Reuben, Gad, half tribe of Manasseh. In this delegation were 10 leaders. So it's Phineas and 10 of the homies, 10 leaders of Israel, one from each of the 10 tribes and each of the head of his family within the clans of Israel. I think even though he's coming with the wrong approach, I'm really glad that he's actually gonna talk before throwing bombs. I'm really glad. Let me ask you this question. Who do you need to reach out to to simply talk with someone to clear up some confusion? To clear up a conflict? To clear up a question? Even if it's a little bit that's still taking a portion of your heart, who do you need to just go talk to to clear something up? It, it, it could be a teenager with your mom. It could be um, maybe two kids that have had a scuffle. It could, I mean, you name it. Like, who's the person that, that you know, and I, that's my challenge. Lord, who are you wanting me to have a talk with? A talk with. We say this around our team a lot. The longer it sits, the worse it, it gets. You know, and I was thinking, I don't just want to be a pastor that preaches it and doesn't do it. So you know what I did this week when I was putting the, all the meat and the potatoes and the vegetables and everything? I had a session where I just, I just sat and I prayed and I said, God, can you highlight 
a couple people, specifically in the church, because remember, this is the same family of God, but they're just different tribes. You know, I look at the church as one, we're one church in this city, in this nation, in this world. We're different tribes, different lanes, different vibes, and that's okay. And I never wanna be that church that goes, ours is the only cool tribe. No, we're, we're one big church. And I was thinking, who, who in the church do, even if it's a tiny bit of disconnect or confusion, Lord, who do you want me to actually go talk to? And by the way, when you do it, best case scenario is what? When, when you go have a talk with someone, come on, give it to me, Cap, face to face. Do not go right to the email, the long email from concernedcitizen at gmail.com. Please don't give me that email. Oh, jeez. I don't know how many of those I've gotten. I'm like, hey, bro, just, just come over. To, let's, let's just go kick it with some coffee, dog. Sit down, talk. We're humans. If you can't go face to face, what's the second? What's the second best? Anybody? There it is. FaceTime, Zoom. It's funny. I reached out to, so there were three people that I reached out to. One of them was like, I hate Zoom. We got a protein shake. It kind of looked a little weird, like a mandate, you know, over a protein shake, but <laughs> three people this week. One Zoom, one face-to-face, -face, one FaceTime. One of the guys, we have continuing clarification that we need to, so we're gonna have lunch this week. You know, I walked away from all of those Thank God that the war is over. Thank God. And by the way, the only thing you can control is your humility and to approach the situation with tact, but clarity. Don't back down from it. Tact and clarity. And, and, and own up to any part of the bargain that's yours. And here's one of the things I said. I was like, man, can you please forgive me? This was definitely not my intention. And then we talked in detail on a few scenarios. And the conversation is ongoing. But let me just say, some responses, like <laughs> you're, you'll have tact, you'll have humility, you'll, you'll wanna clear up the confusion, clear up the question, and they are. <laughs> hey, listen, 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 you can't control that. Can't control it. Did I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Forgive me, okay? See, I'm gonna practice it right now. Will you please forgive me? You get my, you get my heart. You can't control the response, but you can control your courage to walk into a scenario, to sit and to have a discussion. Jot this down, Matthew 5, verse 23 and 24. I love this text, specifically if it's Christian and Christian. Because one of the things that's the worst in the world right now is, a non-Christian looks at the church and now we're fighting over non-salvation issues and they're like, why would I wanna join that thing? Those guys are so lame. We have to grow now. If it's a salvation issue, all day long, we need to clear it up. If it's non-salvation, bias, all this kind of stuff, please, church, we gotta grow. Here, here's a great verse for you. If you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, if you're going to church, you're going to worship, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar, go and be what? What does it say? Go and reconciled. Go and be reconciled to that person and then come and worship. And I want you to think right now, who is the Christian that you have a beef with or even just a tiny misunderstanding with right now? The Bible says, before you come to church, go talk, clear it up. Afterwards, when your heart has been relieved of any of that, now come back and now send it and worship. So Phineas, the 10 leaders, they come with guns blazing and 15 through 20, I, I, I wish I could teach more on this, but let me just give you the, the, the basics. Did they put it up already? They did. Okay, so I wanted to story tell it. Maybe we'll just read it. You guys want to read it? Yeah. 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 All right, here we go. Sorry. I love people that are stoked about the Bible. All right, when they arrived in the land of Gilead, they said to the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and half tribe of Manasseh, 
The whole community of the Lord demands to know why you're betraying God of Israel. And this is what I was reading. How could you? <laughs> that is super accusatory right there. Hold on, man. But you know what? At least he went to talk. It wasn't totally sanctified, but at least he went to, how could you turn away from the Lord and build an altar to yourselves in rebellion against him? Okay, next, next let's go to seven. Was, was our sin at Peor not enough? To this day, we're, we're cleansed of it, even after the plague that struck the entire community of the Lord. That's when Phinehas was filleting people. Um, verse 18, yet today you are, not all the facts, but just saying, you are turning away from following the Lord. If you rebel against the Lord today, you'll be angry with all of us tomorrow. And it's this, I'll stop reading, but the bottom line is there's, there's accusations. And let me just say this, there's good and bad. The good, he went and talked. They didn't just start dropping bombs. They, they wanted to talk about it. The bad, it was super accusatory. It was fuming uh, Phineas. Assuming the worst. And I, and I thought to myself, when we talk, okay, when you have the talk with whoever you need to, a couple of thoughts came to mind. Number one, it's clarification, not condemnation. Okay? Clarification, not condemnation. It's clearer it up, don't cancel them. A lot of canceling going on. Can, can we, how about, how about like this? assume the best and then verify. Innocent until what? Until proven guilty. Assume the best. A lot of times I'll have two married people that will want to sit down and talk and I love that. But one of the things I've always done is Sometimes it's one of the spouses that wants to talk and I'm like, grab the other spouse and I'm all in. Why is that? Because there's two sides of the story, man. <laughs> he does this, she does, she what? <laughs> Give me both. All right, now unload. <laughs> like, okay, doesn't have to be filtered sometimes, just bring it. But at least I got all the facts in the room to be able to dissect Talk, someone say talk. Okay, last one, truth. Because that's what we're really after, isn't it, church? I mean, isn't it, isn't it like the way we're gonna avoid all these wars is get to the truth. Let's get to the truth of the matter. Let's have humble, but very clear. Sometimes kind of, <laughs> it gets kind of dicey. One of, my, one of my discussions, one of my really good friends and I have a totally different view because on a topic, because we have different lens through which we see stuff. We have different upbringings. We have different um, experiences. We have different realities, current realities. And so we see different, but guess what? I love that we have different thoughts. If we have the humility to listen to one another, we both grow even if we don't totally agree. Truth. <laughs> verse 24, let's skip down to verse 24. So they, you know, they talk, and at least they give the two and a half tribes an opportunity to respond, and here's how they do it. The truth is, <laughs> I love that. I underline that in my Bible. The truth is, the truth is, someone, someone say, the truth is, the truth is, man, and, and by the way, if someone comes to you, even if it's accusatory, ask for God's power and humility to respond with, the truth is, the truth is, we've built this altar because we fear that in the future, your descendants will say to ours, what right do you have to worship the Lord, the God of Israel? The Lord's place the Jordan River as a barrier. It's not a barrier. That, that was actually used as an instrument to show the power of God is what it really was. It's not a barrier. But they were thinking it's gonna be a barrier between our people and you people of Reuben and Gad. 
you'd say, you have no claim to the Lord, so your descendants may prevent our descendants from worshiping the Lord. So we decided to build the altar, watch this, not for burnt offerings or sacrifice like you guys supposed, but as what? As a memorial, it will remind our descendants and your descendants that we too have the right to worship the Lord at his sanctuary with our burnt offerings, sacrifices, peace offerings, then your descendants will not be able to say to ours, you have no claim to the Lord. Their motive was different than what they had supposed. Their motive was to remember, not to replace. By God's grace, this church family, this people of God, were able to avoid war by clarifying the truth making sure we hone in and zone in on the truth. That's the idea. So they share, and now the response is so good, man. And uh, skip down to verse 33. So again, they share from their perspective, Phineas, the 10 leaders are like, oh, snap, I can't believe that we (laughs) went from zero to hero. Sorry, man. I'm glad we had this opportunity to clear things up. Verse 33, and then they went back to the rest of the tribes, told them, and all Israel, all all the Israelites, what were they, church? They were satisfied, because they got to the truth, and they praised God, and they spoke. This this hit me so good. Watch what it says. They spoke what? No more of war. War. I feel like in our culture, that's all we talk about. Can you imagine a news day or a social media feed that had zero divisiveness, accusatory, assuming someone's motives, and just there was just peace and love and joy? You saw someone prosper, and you're like, praise the Lord that God's really honoring their hard work and diligence. How awesome. Instead of like, who do they think they are doing that? Wouldn't you just love, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be, just give me one day. Just one day of no more war. Super interesting. No more war against Reuben and Gad. And, and this is the final thing. This is so dope. The people of Reuben and Gad, <laughs> this is dope. they named the altar witness, circle that. I think the Hebrew word is ed, they, Old Ed, that's what they named it. Witness, for they said, it's a witness between us and them that the Lord is our God too. You know, Christian, you you might have different thoughts or different vibes, but you have the same God. By the way, how will people that don't know Christ know that we are Christians? by our love. John chapter 13, can you throw it up there real quick? I think that's what it is. John 13, 35, is it, Nick? Your love for one another will actually prove to the world that you're my disciples. Not your blog posts of division, not your biblical accuracy, not your I, I, I'm right and you're wrong, not I got the right church and you don't. You know what's gonna really show the lost people at your job and at your neighborhood? that you're my disciples, what is it, church? It's your love, your love. Nothing wrong with protecting the purity of the Bible. Can you still do it in love? Love. That's the witness. That's what's gonna prove to the world that we're his disciples. And I'm wondering if that's what we're showing right now in today's day and age. I'll close with just this good news. I'm gonna go specifically to one of, one of the, the guys I reached out to. He's a pastor and we had a misunderstanding because of some counseling that we were both doing with a family and we didn't know, he knew some stuff, I knew 
most of it because I've been with him for a long time. He, he was just wanting to be a good pastor that we serve them the way the Bible told us to, but he didn't know all the information. I felt threatened, I felt judged, and I was immature not to see that all he really wanted was God's best and biblical purity to happen with this family. And it was so cool because I said, man, can you forgive me? He's like, it's not even a thought, I I forgive you. And we prayed together, had our bro teen shake, we hugged it out and said, we're gonna kick it again. We went from war to witness. And I, I'm just believing as all, like again, I have a lot of room to grow, I'm not saying, but, but listen, just, can you imagine around all this, this church and the church in the city of Omaha, if we, if we actively with boldness and courage, and courage and humility have these conversations, can you imagine the witness that will spread throughout this city? You go from divisiveness to cohesiveness, from war to witness. And love is our witness, amen? All right, Lord, thank you for this this time, this challenge, this encouragement from your scriptures, super clear for us. And we pray now, give us wisdom on what next steps are. We wanna walk full surrender unto you, God, led by your spirit for your glory in Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I just wanna, I wanna conclude with an opportunity of response. And here, here's really the question that I would say, number one, if you're a Christian in here, let me go back to it, who do you need to talk to this week to clear up confusion? And I'm gonna give you a bonus uh, scripture out of Ephesians 4, I love it, 31 and 32. If you can bring it up, thank you. Here, here's your challenge, get rid of all bitterness. You got bitterness? Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Now watch this. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. One more bonus scripture, Proverbs 15, one. When you do this, a gentle... (laughs) Someone say gentle. A gentle answer deflects anger. Harsh words make tempers flare. Not condemning, clarifying. Anybody in here need to go have a clarifying conversation? Just raise your hand real quick if you're bold enough. Thank you. Appreciate that. Look at that. A lot of people here. Thank you for your boldness. Tact, grace, humility. That's what it's gonna take. So Lord, I do pray just for a spirit of gentleness, not backing down from total transparency, but gentle, soft words. No more unforgiveness and bitterness, but to be able to address in a humble and tactful way, own up our end of the bargain, to restore, to reconcile, to avoid war. In Jesus' name. I wanna also give an opportunity for anybody in here that has never given their life to Christ. The, the bottom line is, I think we as a church talk about clearing up conflict and confusion. I think we've made the gospel pretty confusing at times, if I'm honest with you. And the simple truth is found in John 3, 16. The Bible says that God so loved the world <laughs> that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. There's the gospel. I think we've like, man, I gotta clean up my life. I gotta pay money. I gotta go to church. I, listen, all good things. You know what the one thing you need to do is understand that God is perfect, he's holy. He knew you were gonna blow it, but because of his great love, he comes down to this planet He's born of the Virgin Mary, lives the perfect life. Jesus Christ, 33 years of perfection, thought, word, and deed. He's wrongly accused. He's crucified for my sin and for your sin, the sin of all mankind. 
He clears up, talk about clearing up a conflict between God and man. The Christ pinned to the tree, he's killed to pay the penalty for my sin. He's buried, three days later he raises from the grave. Now he sends his spirit out, he knocks on hearts. He says, just come to me, come to me and believe. It's because of my great love, I want relationship with you. I've already paid the price. So let's stand together because we're gonna, we're gonna give that opportunity to you right now. It could be you were brought here by a family member, a friend, and, and you're like, man, I need to get right with God. <laughs> Today's your day. Clear up the conflict right now. No more confusion. And I would just send an apology as the church if we've made it confusing. It is turn to him, ask for forgiveness, and begin, begin a relationship with him. Let him clear it up. Let him clean it up. You might be asking, how's that gonna happen? Well, the band's gonna play us song here in a moment. It's gonna be your opportunity to come forward. I'll lead you in a prayer. It's a simple yet profound prayer. God, open up my heart. I wanna follow you. And I would just say, if you don't absolutely have to leave right now, Christian, just start praying. There, talk about a war. <laughs> there is a war for souls going on in our world right now, and the war is right here. Heaven or hell, life or death, blessing or cursing, it's right here. The war's here. Be praying for people online. There's people online tuning in right now. They clicked on this link somehow and God's speaking to them. It doesn't matter what you have done, repent, ask God for forgiveness and God will change your life. If that's you, again, as the church just begins to pray, you come forward, let me, let me lead you in that prayer. Walk away forgiven and changed, amen? So church, begin to pray. Band, go ahead and play. If God's speaking to you, you come now. You come down. You can do anything. You can do anything. My eyes will see your glory. My eyes will see your glory. You can do anything. You can do anything. My eyes. by faith, can you give me this middle camera real quick? Church by faith, I wanna speak and just lead someone to Christ. You're right there on the other side of the screen. And I'm just gonna believe that this is your day, this is your moment. So if you just wanna stop the car, put the fork down, this is your moment. And pray this prayer, God, I open up my heart. I invite you inside. Forgive me of my sin, wash me clean. I've decided today follow you, Jesus, from, from this day forward. I'm all in, I'm yours. Fill me with your spirit. Lead me in a life of love for your glory <laughs> and to help a lot of people, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's celebrate by faith. Thanks again for checking out this video. If you'd like to stay up to date with what's happening here at Love Church, hit the subscribe button or download the Love Church app, which is free on any app store. Have a great week as you continue to experience God's best for your life.